Now the foregrip I'm going to be adding is this. And these come under a variety of different names. If you, <laughs> they're all basically the same. Uh, sometimes you can buy them inexpensively from Amazon. I bought this one. I think it cost me something like, uh, I don't know, about 10 or 12 pounds, something like that. Now this one has two features that I particularly like. First of all, there's a button back here, which if you press it, you have a pair of bipod legs jump out. Now normally I wouldn't pop it out like that. Normally I would actually rest this on the ground, press the button and lift up because it's a lot quieter and it puts less stress on everything. Some people complain about these because they complain, oh, the bipod legs, they won't go back in. They keep popping out. Uh, if that is the case, if you have these and it's had that problem, the problem is not the catch. The problem is the lack of maintenance on the catch. This little button here, which if we can see, so there's a little button there, which if I press that, it releases the bipod legs. Uh, I actually took some three-in-one oil, just put a drop there and a drop there, let it seek in, uh, and then wiped off the excess. You see, part of the problem is you've got moving parts here and there's a latch and it's spring loaded and it has to be in the neutral position for the legs to catch in the closed position. If it's too dry or if it has dirt or grit in there, it may not fully retract and lock in place. Another thing that you can do, if I pop that out for a second, if I pull you, squeeze these together, this, there is a, a retaining ring down here, get that started. And I can unscrew that and it takes all of this gubbins out and I can actually put, a, if you take the long nozzle that you have on WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil spray and just put the least spray at the very base of that. Again, what you're going to do is lubricate uh, this part of the, if I show you here, there's, there's a bit of a, that hooks on to the other side of the latch. As long as that's well lubricated, it'll function. If it's not sufficiently lubricated, it will not. And then it's very easy to just screw this back on again. And like I say, as long as it's lubricated, the, the button will snap into place pretty much every time. Sometimes you have to do it twice. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, but if your button, if it's not locking, you'll find your button is partially recessed. It's not fully going back to the neutral position. And that just means it needs a touch of lubrication. That's it. Like any other thing with moving parts, sometimes it needs a drop of lube. Now, the other thing I like about this particular uh, foregrip is it has a little Picatinny on the side, which we're going to attach a light to. Now, I have here a high intensity, uh, you can see that's a high intensity blue light with a bit of UV in it. Uh, why high intensity blue? Well, first of all, it gives me excellent vision. Certainly anything within 20 or 30 yards, I'll see perfectly. If you're on the receiving end of this and have it flashed in your eyes, it'll blind you slightly. So that gives me the advantage. The other thing is, if you're operating in the field, if, uh, you know, if you've been in the military, you know, they want you to use a red light because it'll preserve your night vision on the one hand. And you can, you know, it's, it's sort of low profile. The problem is if you see a red light in the distance, you kind of know it's a person sneaking around out there. Whereas if they see the blue light from a distance, People and animals will interpret that as a bit of, of like a pool of moonlight. It doesn't really draw the attention the way that red light does. And this is much more intense as well. Uh, so basically, this gives me the best vision. Uh, it is bad for my opponents. And at the same time, it also gives me uh, the advantage of being more stealthy if I'm in the field. Now... I've already attached a, a Picatinny connector there, and I'm just going to put this on here. And I will say this particular connector doesn't like the indents for the Picatinny because uh, it's actually the one that I have here is for a 21 mil, and this is a 20 mil. But by going on the raised portion, it's as if it was on a standard weaver rail. And uh, to be honest, not a problem. If I just use that to tighten up everything once it's in position. As long as I screw that down, good 
in tight, that's now rock solid. That's going nowhere. And what's nice about this is with the same thumb, I can actuate the bipod legs or I can switch the torch on. Uh, I can switch the torch off, pop those up so I can completely control. I can hold the bipod, which is great for stabilizing the weapon and actually will, if I show you in a bit, will make loading it easier. But I can control the bipod legs and the torch with a single press, uh, just, just possibly altering my grip slightly to make it convenient for my button to reach that, to make it easy for my thumb to reach the button, excuse me. Uh, that's easy. It's absolutely easy. I never have to let go, so I can always maintain positive control of the front of the weapon. Now, in order to attach that, we will need a Picatinny rail. Now, I've looked at several, and basically what I settled on as being the best one is this five-slot aluminum, aluminum Picatinny rail. Why aluminum? Why not uh, one of the plastic ones? Well, for a start, I'm going to be cocking the both, and in cocking it, I'm going to be hanging on to this. Right here, where it's attached, a lot of uh, so a lot of force, a lot of pressure, a lot of tension. Very easy to break if it's plastic. It's one of the reasons why we've used the aluminum frame of the Cobra rather than the poly frame. Now, as I showed you in a previous episode, there are two pre-drilled, pre-threaded holes on the bottom, and they are designed to take. M4, M4 M4 bolts. Uh, this is about a 12 mil. Anything longer than that won't work. I'll have to shorten it. Now, one problem with this, you'll notice that you have the two holes and they're actually five slots apart. So that's in, inside of a slot. So that's one, two, three, four, and the last one's in a slot five. Now that's a standard sort of spacing, and in the aluminium it's just this size and it's perfect. The problem is the center measurement from this hole to the center measurement of that hole is just a little bit wider than these two holes. I don't know why they didn't drill these to what is standard for these, but it doesn't matter. Uh, there was a simple workaround. What I've had to do is take a couple of needle files. I've used a round to rough it out and a half round to finish it off. And what I've done is on the inside of both holes, just file down, flip it over, do the same on the other side, smooth it off with the half round. Uh, these are diamond coated ones, but you can use, really, you go to the DIY store or, or an auto repair shop, you can find needle files, they'll work. This is only aluminum. It's really easy to file. If you're using a steel file on an aluminum component, it'll just go through like a hot knife through butter. So I've just had to make these slightly, uh, just slightly towards each other. Not much, a couple of millimeters. At this point, I can take my two bolts and drop them both in, and then I can screw this in. So we're going to locate our positions, start the bolt on the one side, and then start the bolt on the other side and just screw them in really really tightly and I will tell you that when you first use this the first time you cock this weapon if it's not fully tight you'll find your foregrip is going to jiggle about a bit if that happens after you load an arrow in and then uncock your weapon by shooting it into your target you just tighten them up a little bit more because once they're on really tight, you're good to go. Now, another thing I like about this 
is this knob here. That loosens up your Picatinny attachment and it works really, really fast. So once it's actually ready to go, literally you just, as long as it's the, the correct tension, this will I'll loosen up a bit more. So once that's set correctly, it just pops into place. Once it's popped into place, you just turn that till it tightens down. Uh, with a little practice, you probably do it in, well, frankly, it only takes seconds, really. Once that's good and tight, your foregrip is attached. You can put on the light, or if you want to, you can deploy the legs for bipod use. Very easy to use. And again, a simple technique, by the way, for deploying the bipod legs without them making that loud noise. You put your little finger underneath them and press the button. That means you're catching it. You just lower it down and they pop open more or less silently. And they are redeployed back into the body of it very easily. Once you have added the foregrip, there's a couple of things. First of all, again, I can operate the torch or I can operate the bipod. And you'll notice what I did there, which is actually very convenient. If you put your little finger underneath the bipod before you press the button, you can lower it and release it silently and putting less strain and wear and tear on the, on the whole component. Putting it back in, very easy. Now, when this is being cocked with the loading spur on the front, uh, which is fine if you don't have a magazine on this. Uh, you're pushing downwards with both arms. It's actually quite difficult. And if you try to work in that same pushing down motion uh, when you've got the foregrip, it's actually a little awkward and doesn't load as fast as you might like it to. But what's good about this is if you change your technique, it actually becomes easier and faster to reload. So that's actually a good thing. So instead of trying to push down with both arms simultaneously, what you're actually trying to do is squeeze your fists together. So if I just demonstrate, that was quick and easy. The other thing is, of course, when you are shooting this, you've got a two-handed grip. It's super steep. And uh, again, loading very quick, you just grab the cocking lever, place your thumb on the latch, disengage the latch, squeeze your arms together, and it's that easy. And you'll notice as well, by the way, um, that's rock solid, because as long as you screw everything down sufficiently tightly, It'll actually work an absolute treat. And again, reloading fairly quick. Obviously, right now, we don't have the magazine on yet, so it's taking a little bit of extra. It takes a lot more time to put the bolt in. Once the magazine's on, this thing will fire incredibly quickly. So I hope you found that useful and you will not be too intimidated by having to attach a foregrip to your Cobra. In the next episode, we'll be attaching another one of the components and over the next few weeks, we'll fully assemble this into the working carbine. I hope you enjoyed this, found it interesting. And of course, uh, if you are not subscribed yet, I recommend you do subscribe to catch the rest of these. Also, make sure you click the bell icon. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and if you have something useful to say, please feel free to comment. I know at least one of my viewers has already commented because he's got a stinger, and I'm very interested in his feedback because obviously comparison between different kinds of tactical crossbows is an interesting thing to learn about. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again. Have a good one.